Hey guys, it's Stephanie. I'm Trey. This is your weekly dose of BS. It is 83 degrees in Dallas. I'm wearing a jacket yeah, today. Yeah, what? Skippy, skippy. She was um, so excited. She bought a new coat. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, why? <laughs> I literally bought I haven't even taken the tag off. I just threw it on. I'm going to take the tag off right now. But it's like so cozy. I have this jacket and... Uh, like a camel color, a tan color. It's I very love soft. It. It's very and soft. Like stretchy. And it's stretchy, and it kind of is in between a like a jacket slash cardigan because it feels like a sweater, but it looks like just it's so cute. It's like thicker than like a you know flimsy cardigan. It's fabulous. It's by Mango. Love it. Yep. Check it out. And you know what's super paid. fun is she will wear this jacket until it falls apart at the seams. But yes. she has some real nice ones in her closet. She won't touch. Yeah, I have like but some really one, expensive. Yes. This one, she's going to wear I mean, until she Trey, can't wear it anymore. How many expensive sunglasses do I have and what do I wear every she's day? She's rocking these $12 Amazon ones. My $12 Amazon glasses. I love these things. They are so <laughs> chic. They, if you're watching on YouTube, just you know they are cute. I just put them on. They, I didn't put them on the correct way because like, my hair, like my ears are covered with this head. But they're so cute. They're $12. So. I feel like all your expensive sunglasses, something happened to it. But the $12 ones, they are just indestructible I and mean, never go away. The Nobody's going to steal these from me. They're like <laughs> Dior, Gucci, Versace. Nope. Okay, you nope. can keep these. Amazon. So, yeah, but I do have some nice ones at the house um, in my closet. I just always reach for these. You want to know something funny? Stephanie has a handful of Birkin bags. She won't carry them because they're too expensive. Yes. <laughs> I swear. Like, what? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Stresses me out. Oh, yeah. Huh? So, yeah. I Whatever, Trey. You know what? Because if something happens, I would be so stressed out about it. Like, if something happens to my everyday bag, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Like, I had this camel colored, and I shouldn't say, it's a Dior bag, so it's still really expensive. But I carry the crap out of it. Like, my cost per wear is probably half a penny at yeah. this point. Like, it's very, so I just bought this other bag, um, that I've been eyeing, if you follow. Anyways, I've been if, eyeing. If you're watching thing. on YouTube. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube. If not, you're really missing out okay, on Okay, how do you say things. that? Um, so I always, I, somebody told me it's Loewe. Yeah. Loewe, mm -hmm. something like that. Loewe or something. Um, but there you go. But it's so cute. And it's a good everyday bag. And um, so, yeah, that's my new um, my new thing. Yep. Yes. Yep. You beat up a bag. There was I this Celine really, bag yes. she was carrying for years. It was like. 1900 bucks maybe a few years ago and that thing got stepped on like it was in the back seat of the car like it that thing went through it worth every penny yes. i was never more yes. impressed with a brand after watching celine. that celine bag hold there, up yeah Man. you know i still have that bag and it looks new it's it still like it looks new i mean it's really good i mean now if you open it up Probably not because there's some stuff like land, there's some treasures. There, there's some coins <laughs> and like treasures. probably some earring backs and some gum <laughs> yes. wrappers and a Taco Bell coupon. But it like for using it as much as I did, it's but then the bags yep. that I have that are really, really nice that um, I really don't use them as much because yep. it stresses me out. Those are my like drinking bags. Like if I'm going out on a date with Travis, I'll care. I'll like take out my special bags. Yep. But like some people are like, you know, I don't want to pay that much money for like a name. It's like, no, some of these bags, like a Celine bag, you are paying for the yeah, quality. You're paying for the quality. I would that agree. That thing is If you're going to buy a bag, true. Celine is the brand mm -hmm. because they last for forever, forever, forever. They're so amazing. So yes, I would agree with you. Okay, so last night you sent me a TikTok, and it was something that Kathy Griffin posted. First of all, she looks great. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about like she just looks. She looks good. Well, she, she was, was looking using a little the, um, the bold. Um, if you look on it, oh, is it a filter? Fil yeah, it is a heavy filter. Um, oh. But yes, but she does look good. That's a, if the filter makes everyone look like they're like a GQ model. Well, um, it yeah, but it looks great. But yes, I'm, I'm gonna. If you get on there and look at it, don't feel bad about yourself because I did look. I was like, because I thought I was like, wow, she looks great, and then I was like, oh, the bold glam filter. Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so she posted this that works this well. TikTok, and she was saying that she is concerned about Kanye. Kanye West's new wife. Yes. And that he is abusing her. And she goes into all the reasons. You'll have to go watch her TikTok because she really goes into a deep dive about this. And she started out, she was like, I'm probably going to get so much hate for this. But she was like, here's my opinion. And she was sharing how her brother abused his wife. Um, and, you know, went as far as to like, I, I don't know how he got her outside, but after she took a shower, locked her out of the house to where she was just naked outside, like it had to have a neighbor help her. And there's been some similar situations recently with Kanye and his wife where he like tried to make it look like she was performing a sexual act on him on a boat his somewhere knowing were they were down. paparazzi. His yeah. butt was showing. Did you see this yes. video? Okay, yes. so I did a deep dive. His pants were like, uh, no, like his 
whole butt was out. Like he had a jacket kind of covering a little bit, but his whole butt was out. Um, and then uh, like he would dress her to wear, like one day, I don't even know if she had a top on, she had a pillow from their suite covering her chest mm-hmm. area. And she's out walking around. He has her wearing like, Things maybe she's comfortable with, but I would not be comfortable with. Uh, like very yeah. strangely dressed, like very, like pretty much next to nothing, like kind of like pantyhose for the body. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he also, whenever they first started dating or got married or whatever, he was very much dressing her the same way he dressed Kim. Yes. So she was saying, I feel for this girl and I think she's in a bad situation, but I don't know what to do about it. I'm just saying this, I guess, to make people aware that I don't think this girl is okay. What are your thoughts on that? No, I, I went and did a deep dive after seeing this. And I, and if you do a deep dive on TikTok, um, it's very interesting because it is almost like she looks a lot like Kim Kardashian, yes. first of all. A lot. Not so much now. Her body is a lot like Kim Kardashian. And at first. But like at first was, she looked a whole lot like Kim at Kardashian. At first he was trying to fake people out. Like was dressing her in like the exact same thing yes. that Kim would like wore, wore like, you know, a few months prior. And so people were like, is that Kim? And so it's almost like he was trying to like psych people out with like a Kim dupe. Yeah. But now if you look at the videos and maybe, you know, like when Kim was with him, she went to the point where she just like never smiled, like at yeah. all the red car or the carpet stuff that they did, like she, they would never smile. And then she, I think said it was because she didn't want to get wrinkles or something like that. And I'm like, that's what Botox is for. Um, but, um, but the, I looking at it and this is just me not knowing them at all. So forgive me if I'm wrong people, but it's almost like he has this anger with Kim and he's using this girl like to humiliate her almost because yeah. they do look a lot alike. So it's almost like he's taking out stuff on that he feels with Kim out on this girl because the stuff he has her wearing and she looks miserable. Like there were videos of her before mm-hmm. they got together. Um, bef- now they're they're married. I guess like they got married kind of out of very the blue. Quickly. Which, yeah, very quickly, like two months after they got he got divorced from Kim. Um, but she looks very, very different, and she just never looks happy when they're out together. She just looks miserable. Also, I would be miserable, too, if I was walking around, everyone's looking at me, making fun of me, and my chimichangas are out. I have to have a pillow for my hotel to cover up my boot. Like, there, there's nothing good about that. Okay, I'm just going to play devil's advocate here, though. If, if this was Kim, I would feel bad for her, because I feel like when Kim got with Kanye, he was somewhat normal. Yes. And then shit switched yes did this girl not know who kanye was did she not know how like off the wall he is like she worked do you for... not know what you're walking into so she so that's for where i'm like the, mm. i think she worked for yeezy or the clothing company mm-hmm. she worked for uh his company and some i kind of found that out yesterday when i was doing deep dive as well however in the beginning obviously i think he was probably treating her like kim like which yeah. is where okay you're my doll i want you to be like I'm going to dress you up. I'm going to take you to all these extremely, like they were saying, like all the places you're staying in are like fifteen, twenty thousand dollar a night resorts. Right. Um. I don't. So we think, wind and dine, and then like it was a bait and switch. I think most people are, and I'm not saying Kanye is abusive. I'm just saying, look, I see why Kathy would do that because it mm-hmm. does look weird. And I think whenever you really do a deep dive into everything people are talking about, and if you get on TikTok, it's very easy to do. Just type in the girl's name, and then everything pops up. Right. Um. But I, with any situation that turns out to be abusive, whether it's physical or mental abuse, you don't go in there because the person's abusive. You go in there because they treat you really great and there are all these great qualities about you. They make you feel a certain way about yourself. And then it slowly um, morphs into who they slowly let their guard down and they slowly start becoming the people that they really are. And you're almost in too deep. To see it, and I think a lot of times you get used to the behavior and the patterns, and also it's scary to get away with somebody from somebody who's super controlling. It's terrifying. I just think with him, like that behavior is you can Google it. It's like there's a history of it. You can see it. You, yeah. you we're watching it in real time on the news. It have been for a few years, so it's like. I, I, is she or is she like very much like down with this and is like, yeah, let's I mean, do it. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe it could be. At the same time, I think a lot of women, um, even men, probably. Um, they, the bad boys, the bad girls, you know, people, you think that you're the one that can change them and you know what, you're going to be the person that brings out the best in them and they're going to change for you. And, 
I don't, I'm always like, I'm not saying this girl's a victim, but see, it just red flags are waving all over when I look at videos of the two of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what Kathy's whole thing was. She's like, I see the flags. She's like, I just want to like point this out and see like, is the girl okay? Or is she consenting to this? Yeah. But nobody knows because she's very, the girl's very quiet. She doesn't have a social media presence really. She's like... A lot of her friends, I guess, um, from what I read, say that they really, like, she's a very different person. She's very isolated now. They don't really Mm. talk to her, so. And the pictures of her before, like, very pretty girl, but just, like, looks totally different. Yeah. Totally different. 100% different. So it's interesting. I I would say if you're listening to this, you have a little bit of time. Do a, do a deep dive. It's it's a very fascinating case. I really didn't even know it existed until I was on TikTok yesterday. And then I was like, wait, what is this? And then whenever you really look into it, it's very interesting. Okay, I'm so late to the end, but I just watched the TMZ Britney Spears divorce documentary. This came out like a month ago. Have you uh-huh. seen it? TMZ divorce documentary? Yeah, on Britney and Sam. I think I've seen all of them, but go for it. Yes. So... This documentary I thought was going to be more about, like, what led to the divorce. And Uh this was basically, this really, like, dives into my theory that Sam is, he's getting paid by TMZ and he was in on the conservatorship, all that stuff. They tried to make him, like... A victim, yes. Absolutely. Which and maybe was saying he that is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. We don't know. But it basically was like this whole thing was about how Brittany abused Sam and like was showing like these bruises on like his arm after he like left the gym one day and he had this black eye and apparently one night like she attacked him and she always had like knives by the bed and like she gave, she punched him in the face when he was sleeping. And I'm like, but where is that coming from if not from Sam? You know what I mean? And why is that not out? Like that would be a story. That wouldn't that be? So I'm yeah. just like, I think that while they're trying to paint this picture of like Britney was this bad person and abused him and did all this stuff to him, I think it's almost the other way around where she has had one more person in her life controlling her that she didn't realize. I mean, I'm okay. I'm gonna be honest. I the Britney Spears stuff. I am so. I don't know where I stand on it because I. I don't either. I, I don't really know don't. where I stand anymore. It used to be like free the girl, let her. Titney Spears, like, let the boobies fly. <laughs> what? <laughs> Titney Spears? <laughs> yes. She's always naked. She always has her boobs out. But now I don't know because I I do think that she, I don't know where I stand on her. I just hope she gets help. I think that she has a very strong relationship with everybody in her life. The whole Sam thing, I do believe that men get abused just as women. Mm-hmm. So I hate to ever say that, no, this isn't happening whenever it could be happening just because somebody's famous and has a big platform behind them. Um, I, I, I don't even know what to think. I just think the girl needs to get in and see a very good therapist. She needs people around her that like love and support her and that want the best for her. But I think that's what she keeps reaching for and yes. keeps missing. Yes. I think with Sam, she was trying to find someone that was there for her and supported her. And I think she saw that like that wasn't always that way or that he wasn't fully on her side or on her team. And there was some talking to other people because all the stuff that TMZ has only TMZ has. So it's yeah. kind of just weird. It's like, so you're not paid for this. You're, you're going to tell me that you just gave it to TMZ. They just know you were at the gym. Like we haven't seen this picture literally anywhere else. Um, but like even the friends around her, I think right after the divorce, like a few days after that was announced, she went to some chicken restaurant that was like an hour and a half outside of Los Angeles. And there were paparazzi there. And she was like, how in the world of the paparazzi here i'm with three other friends why would they be here if someone didn't tell them i was here yeah and it's like well, that's very true i think she, so she's always looked for those genuine friendships and she just hasn't found it you know what i would like to see Brittany do is get out of la move mm-hmm. somewhere like small town small town people will take care of you they will that's literally true. like let anybody have it that gets near your house. Like, mm-hmm. move somewhere where you can just be yourself. Coweta. Where you have Coweta, they would protect you. I will tell you this much right now. If they're pop, but also, like, paparazzi aren't there all the time. Like, maybe right. they would be there for a while and then they'd be like, okay, girl doesn't leave her house very much. We're moving on back yeah. to Hollywood. But I, but I do wish that she would move somewhere else. Like, if you really want like freedom mm-hmm. and peace, you're not going to find it. In the land where all the other celebrities live. Yep, I agree. So I th- I hope she moves and gets a farm somewhere and yes. get somebody to brush her hair every day and do her <laughs> eyeliner. <laughs> At least someone to brush her hair. Yes, that's what I want for her. Yep, I agree. Yeah.
I agree. Okay, so before we were talking about Kanye West, and then this vision popped in my head of Travis oh. um, in his man panties. Before I knew him, by the way, this was before we knew each other. So you're talking about how you had a friend who was kicked out of her house by, or no, Kathy Griffin, like this, yes. yeah, butt naked. So anyway, so Travis, I think he was staying at the W. This was before we knew each other, and he was there with a bunch of his like guy friends, and they were having like a like a whole guys weekend, and I guess he somehow. Lock, I don't know what happened. I think, oh, his, I don't know what ha- What in the world happened. I have to call him. Anyway, somehow he got locked out of his um, room. His friend was in there sleeping, passed out, and he accidentally locked himself out of his room in his man panties. Uh, in his Wait, underwear. Yes. What are man panties? Like, you know, like bikini briefs or whatever. That's I call oh. them man panties, right? <laughs> so anyway, so then he like tried to get in, tried to get in, tried to get in. It's like 2 a.m. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So then he has to go down the elevator to oh. the main. Uh, no. Yes, in his man panties. Yes, and ask for a key to get back into his room. Ooh. Yes. Mm. I can even call him and have him tell you the story. But that's yes. I think it was at I the W. To- <laughs> and you want me to call him real quick? Can we? Okay, hold I think on. You should hear him. He's going to be this. like, Steph. I have many things to do. And this is one of them. <laughs> Hey, we're recording right now, so you're on air. Um, hey, we there we were uh, there was a story about somebody getting locked out of their room like naked, and I was like, oh my god, this happened to Travis in his man panties. Can you tell us about the time? I think it was at the W where you got locked out of your room in your underwear and you had to go down the elevator. It wasn't at the W. It was in Boston, and yeah, I just got we had a little too much to drink, and some guy that was staying with me that I'd never met before. We're good friends now. <laughs> Brian Redmond put us together, and he came in. He came. He wasn't with us, so he came in that night, and the front desk wouldn't let him up or something. I can't remember what it was. So I walked out, or walked out, and just got locked out. So I had to. But you were in your underwear. The front desk. And yeah, I was in my underwear. And then, so you couldn't get back in because you didn't have your key. Yeah, but my six pack abs were doing looking good. <laughs> oh, you know, everything else was doing really well for me at that point in time. So wait, what time was this? I was hoping it was two AM. Nobody was there. Did everyone see you in your no, man it panties? Like, it was like two in the morning. Oh, okay. And then you had to go yeah, downstairs. I mean, there was like the girl at the I, I know that the girl at the front desk was very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> You're so full of shit. First thing she said is I I want to come to your room and I'm like, No, no. Okay. I'm, I'm married. Oh, were, were we married? I didn't think we were together at the time. I just knew this story. Were we married? Oh, we're, we're, yeah, no, we were married. I, and I just told her, hey, I'm married, and, you know, I, I look really good. My panties. <laughs> my panties. So, that's what we did. Oh, my she didn't gosh. Come to the room now. I just want to make sure you know she did not come to the room. Oh, well. When yes. was this? When was this? Okay, we went to uh, uh, Cowboys played the uh, Patriots. Okay, how long ago was this? I just. Like 10 years ago. Oh, I, okay, yeah. <laughs> Lord, it's been so long. I thought we weren't so, even together. Um, yeah, no, oh, okay, well, that's it. I just was telling them the way, about... For all those that are listening, I, I still look that good in my man panties, so... <laughs> yeah. Thank you for calling. Okay, yeah, exactly. Okay, honey, love you. Okay, what, Trey? Bye. Trey, do you like man panties? No, we just need a new word for man panties. <laughs> all right. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Oh, yeah, whenever what? I met Travis, let me tell you two things that I could not, like, I was like, wait, you did not date people that loved you before me, okay? Two things. <laughs> One, man panties. It took me a long time to get him out of those man panties because he's like, well, my thighs are big. So, like, I, like, they cut off my circulation. I don't know. So, anyways, so now he wears. um like boxer briefs. Yeah. Um, Tommy Johns, for those of you who also have the same problem that you only like to wear man panties. They have very, like, s- like nice filling. Silky, yeah, silky, like, the breathable. So that, I got him out of his man panties. And then also, whenever we first started dating, he wore, like, scrunchy socks with his tennis shoes at the gym. Oh. So, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Like, the socks that you would wear. Like, I think I wore those in the 90s where they were, like, kind of scrunched down a little bit. And I was like, I don't know who you've dated in the past, but obviously they did not love you as much as I do because <laughs> I cannot be seen with you in these socks. So I got him to wear ankle socks. Which look a lot better. So now, anyways, I've really done a number on him. Yes. Oh, thank goodness. Yes. Okay. Lord's work. This did not make Housewives, and I'm so upset it didn't. Travis had this idea. I don't know why this was, like, happening, what the whole scene was going to be. But he called me one day, and he was like, I need you to go to one of the stores on Cedar Springs and buy me the gayest-looking underwear you can find. And I was like, 
done. Didn't even ask questions. I was like, sure, whatever. And so I was sending him pictures. I was like, do these look gay enough for you? Do these look gay enough for you? He was going to do something on camera with you. I oh, tried no. to embarrass he you, did. He and it did. never happened. He, no, it did, but it didn't make it. Okay. Yeah, it, like that you filmed it, but it didn't make the yeah, show. So we did a whole like massage. <gasps> what That's was the massage right. for? Like, I think you like lost a bet. I lost a bet, and I was going to give him a s- massage, mm-hmm. and I set it all up, and it was such a good scene. And then he like took his d robe and he had these really flamboyant man panties on and i was like did trey get those for you and he said yes and i was like i'll kill him um (laughs) (laughs) oh i wish we had that footage i had i like and and, you know you have to make it entertaining as his housewives i had like like Cruz's little dinosaurs I was bouncing on his back I put peanut butter I like pretended like it was hot oil I heated peanut butter up poured it on his back had biscuit come and lick it up <laughs> <laughs> hoping he would think it was me just getting all hot and steamy um what else did we have it was such a good scene oh man see that's the stuff that should have made it no I was like doing a fights. tambourine around him <laughs> pretending like it was like I was trying to do like something you know like very uh relaxing Hmm. Uh, it was very, it was such days. a good seat. Yes. Oh, I did pour hot candle wax on him to try to be <laughs> sexy and it burned the crap out of him. <laughs> so romantic. I know. I try. The sports world. Well, I don't know if it's the sports world. No, I'm going to say it's the sports world. ESPN is eating up some Taylor Swift right now. Well, I think it was like probably their Ooh. highest, uh, like everyone watched because There was of a that. rating spike because all the Swifties who've never watched football tuned in to watch this Chiefs game. Okay, so I did not know who this guy was because I don't pay attention to football at all unless it's Chance or Cruz Holman. Um, <laughs> like, they're the only sports players I really care about in the world, to be honest. Um, but I do remember whenever they, I think it maybe it was last year's Super Bowl. If it wasn't, it was probably 15, 55 years ago. And But it, uh, that Kelsey guy or whatever yeah. his name is, he has a brother who plays on an opposing yes. team. So they play the Super Bowl against yes. each other. Yes. Yeah. And then the mo- anyways, and then the mom, I was like, oh, as a mom. That's a win win as a that's mom. That's like, yeah, I'm like, well, you have two Both really my kids are in the Super awesome. Bowl. Yeah. But they seem so cute. Like I was watching a video of them and they're like such mama's boys and they're super southern and so cute. I like him for Taylor Swift. I think he's adorable. Um, she seems really happy. People were saying it's a publicity stunt. Whatever. I don't care. Well, I think so they were shocked. Together. That, so he went to her concert that was at that same arena a few months ago. Uh-huh. And he made a friendship bracelet with, like, his name and phone number on it and tried to give it to her. But he wasn't able to get back there to see. Like, she won't see anyone before the show because she doesn't want to, like, talk. She's going to save her voice. You know, she's got to sing for three hours. Uh, but somehow it got to her. And then he, like, on a podcast was, like, you know. If she wants to come to a game, I would love to have her, blah, blah, blah. This was, like, last week, and then she showed up at the game this week in his, like, friends and family box. So it's been, like, rumored for a minute that they've been dating, but this really kind of solidified it. If you There's a TikTok online. I have to send it to you. Um, of the other players on the field realizing that Taylor Swift is oh, up there. Yeah, and they're I like, saw it. oh, so shit, cute. that's yes. Taylor Swift. <laughs> and like they just like the whole stadium. But the whole game, they just kept cutting to Taylor to see her reactions. Like that's like the Taylor Swift effect. Like this is this is great. So there's also there's another like TikTok challenge. I don't know what to call it challenge going around. Where these wives are like, Oh my gosh, can you believe that Taylor Swift put this guy, Travis, whatever, on the map? Like that's so nice of her. Travis Kelsey. And the husbands are like, No, she did not. Like he has been famous for a long time. She did None of that, but listen, they're gonna be a little power couple together. I yeah, I think they're real cute together. I really like him. Um, for her, it makes me want to watch football. Not um, <laughs> like um, no. Um, it, I almost watched it just knowing she was there, like to see how much you know TV time she got. But ESPN was they were oh God, all in. Eating they were, it up on social media, like everything oh, they're putting out there is NFL, about Taylor Swift. Is about Taylor Swift. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is they the just best got a thing whole new audience. Yes. Like, they're excited. You know why? Because everybody wants her to find love. And you know, I think that he is really very brave. First of all, to go out oh, there and get shocking. beat up every day on the football field. Like, that has got to be scary having all these men come at you and trying to tackle your ass. That's got to be real scary. I thought about that before when my son's out there. Um, but also, you know she's going to write a song about you if it doesn't work out. Oh. You know every all the Swifties are going to hate you if it doesn't work out. Yeah. There's a lot of bad – if you don't get married to this girl, it's your life's going to suck for a while. Well, she is just so busy, yes. so famous, so rich. Like, that. that's a hard – ball field to step on like yeah. you're taylor swift like that's i don't know i feel like she'd be a hard one to date yeah but, but they're both busy they both yeah. are very good at their own 
uh, job perspective jobs. I yeah. don't know. I think it's real cute. I'm he's also at it. like the end of his career apparently. Oh, and is he? She's, yeah, I guess he's been playing for like ten years. Oh, I didn't even so know he existed until him cr- and his brother played against each other. I didn't know until last week when he, you know, she was at the game. Um, and it was funny. He said something like right before the game. He was because. I guess someone asked his brother in an interview, like, are they dating? And he was like, I don't know, but I think so. And he was like, will everyone please stop asking my brother about my love life? Because he's going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> but this is shocking. She walked in the front doors of the oh stadium. Oh, my gosh. Walked in, went up to the suite. No one knew she was there. She had a hat on. She had some security with her, obviously, but no one else was with her. And she just walked right in. It was oh. after the fact. They found it about 20 minutes into her being there that she was there, and that's when all hell Everything broke loose. Went. Oh, and I heard that she, like, left in, like, one of those carts or something. So, yeah, there was, like, a popcorn cart. Yes. And that's the way that she gets in and out of the arena whenever she does her show is uh-huh. there's, like, a janitor's, like, trash can, basically, and she's in the trash can. Um, and so, allegedly, that's how she got in and out, but since then the chief's been like no she walked out there was i saw a video of like outside the suite there was like swat team it was insane and there were so many people but um there's a video of her walking like the back way out and there was one guy that had his phone out and was like hey and there there was like no pda but travis saw the guy first and like kind of pointed it out but she was she was very she was very good so i also saw this theory on tiktok so, you know, she had dinner last week with um, Sophia Turner. Is that her name? Sophie Turner. Sophie Turner. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Who is Joe Jonas's. Soon to be ex-wife. Soon to be ex-wife. Yeah. And they are going through a nasty divorce. So this theory was, why did Taylor Swift do this? This was like a very public thing, like knew this was going to be a huge deal. It was going to take over the media. So the theory is they went to dinner last week and Taylor was like, I- I'm so sorry you're going through this. How can I help you? And she's like, there's nothing you need to help me. And she's like, actually, I probably can get the heat off you for a moment if I put it on myself and yeah. did this as a favor to her friend. I could see that. That's a good friend. You I know. know that's I would like, do that. I'd be like, you know what? I'll yeah, throw myself in the lion's den to like give you a minute. Yeah. That's a really, really, really good friend. I agree. Before we leave, I have to tell you about my job. So I, you quit. I no, I not really. Oh. Um, so you know, like I'm kind of helping out for free a little bit at Holman, um, and I don't think a lot of the customers know who I am. Um, and so you don't I, say like, "Hi, this is Stephanie Holman with <laughs> Holman." <laughs> oh, no, sound familiar? So, or maybe they don't like. I'm doing a lot of emailing stuff, okay. right? So maybe not. So anyway. Travis and I go to Maine, uh, Kenny Bunkport, Maine. If you've not been, go. It's amazing. Like one of the coolest places I've been in a long time. So shout out to all my Maine friends. But um, I'm there and I'm like, I have not worked in Fort. I probably should like call some people. Like some people I haven't. Oh, you're working on like, vacation I ha- during like, your I'm PTO. That, I am that like in it. So Travis is um, on the board, uh, Big Brother, Big Sister, um, Southern Chapter. So he is at the board meeting, which is why we were there. And I met. I'm just at the hotel and I have three hours and I'm like, you know what? I should just follow up on some of these I haven't heard from yet, right? Um, so I call this person and like lets me have it. Tells me I am the dumbest person. <gasps> <laughs> what? Yes. She's like, you are not very smart. I said, ma'am. She was kind of rude to me. Um, and I said, ma'am, I cannot disagree with you. I do not really do this for a living. And I said, so I'm really, do not let me be uh, your standard, uh, the company, because I'm I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to this. Like, I'm just kind of helping out. I said, I'm a temp, I'm a temp worker. Um, so I told her I was from a temp. Uh, you t- agreed <laughs> with her? Yes. And then we were best friends at the end. <laughs> like, she was like, this poor dumb girl. Okay, I feel sorry for you. Then we were like, so good. So anyways, this is to my other working women in the world. Sometimes you just have to agree. If they're, like, in a bad mood. Like, this lady was so scared. I was shaking. Like, she was, like, a tough New Yorker. I was like, oh, my, she's going to beat my anus. Um, And then the moment that I agreed that I had no idea what I was doing, she was very nice to me. So if you're working and you're dealing with tough, tough customers and they are telling you you're not the smartest person, do not Agree with them? Just say, you know what? Maybe I am. Uh, <laughs> But don't let that <laughs> affect the way you feel about our company. <laughs> Thank you for that. Then they'll be your best friend. Yeah, so that's my that that's my nugget ending. of advice. That yes. was great. So anyways, Trey, yeah, how good is that? But I surely did not say I'm the boss's wife. Uh, no. <laughs> well, not at that point. <laughs> you're like, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> you're like, uh, you know what? You have a point there, ma'am. I oh am not gosh. very smart at this. 
Okay, well, before we wrap, I want to tee this up. Next week, I'm going to give you all the tea on my interview with Mauricio. Oh, crap. I forgot about that. Oh, no, yes. we don't have time this week, but the okay. episode, we recorded this for the Red Mike podcast, which is like the agency in Dallas is a podcast. And I sat there terrified the entire time that Damon, my boss at the agency, was going to ask this, and Mauricio just brought it up. Ooh. But he, he, like, went all in. So it comes out next week. We'll do a whole recap next week. I'll tell you what he said. So just make sure you subscribe to this podcast and listen. Bye. Oh, oh you can yeah. follow me on Instagram <laughs> at Trey underscore Stewart. Steph Holman on all the things. Including threads. <laughs> you can follow our podcast at BS the Podcast, or you can watch us on YouTube and see Stephanie's sunglasses. Yes. Um, what's our YouTube page? We close to BS. That's right. Bye. Bye. Yay, networks.